Good afternoon, Milliken. This is uh, alumni Patrick Hoban. I'm doing another video for you guys. Uh, this is going to be more of a lab style. So uh, sometimes whenever we do a lecture, we'd go through the process, um, the slide deck, talk about my experience, how we got here, and then we would actually get to go to a lab and walk through some of the process. So today uh, we'll focus on LinkedIn, and then I'll do another video, um, best practices for Twitter, I'm not sure about Facebook. There's some pretty cool things you can do on there with broadcasting. So it really depends on what your major is and who your audience is. Um, if there's a need for that, we will. And then possibly another follow-up video on actually blogging and creating your own content. Um, but for now, let's focus on LinkedIn. So let's switch this over to um, what we talked about last time, which was uh, using Feedly um, to find RSS feeds for companies that you want to follow. So just to try to think about where you want to work and um, follow those uh, businesses and that are involved in those industries. Um, for me, with my background um, in analytics now, I'm really focusing on business modeling, uh, being a portion of the work that I do in economic development. I just came across this article. Um, as you see, as you scroll through a feed, um, if you click on one of them, it will um, open it up even further. Uh, this one, assessing coronavirus's impact on your business model. This is very relevant right now and something that um, I'd like to share on LinkedIn. Uh, one of the tools that we talked about last time was Buffer, which is underneath this link. I do believe <clears throat> Buffer now um, is a paid subscription. Um, if I did it via Buffer, I want to say it's like five bucks a month or something. There's different free versions you can do. But the cool thing about um, Buffer, it can schedule. Um, you can do an auto queue, which will find the best time for you to post it. Or if you want to schedule it yourself, you can do it after um, after hours. Uh, so in my role, and there's certain things that I would want to publish um, after hours, uh, especially uh, working with governments. Um, there's other things that are okay to publish during working hours, but it's really up to you. Uh, popular times seem to be about 10 a.m., um, 2 p.m. If it's on a Friday, um, you can normally catch them afternoon. Um, same thing on Mondays. You normally want to wait though until um, later in the day, just because a lot of people are catching up on emails um, before they jump right in. There's a lot of other services you can hook up to this. Uh, Instagram, um, there's a ton. Uh, but for those of you who don't feel like paying for it, which I don't blame you, um, you can actually link directly to LinkedIn. So for this example, we'll just shoot it straight to LinkedIn um, from Feedly. And it is going to pop up a little window here. We'll hit share post. Uh, one thing I can say, once you build out your um, network, uh, a really cool thing that you can do um, instead of just posting it out there for everybody is if you have a um, associate and you see an article that reminds them of a conversation you had, um, just a really quick ping to hit send as a private message to so-and-so. Uh, maybe it's a classmate. Maybe it's uh, somebody that, uh, maybe it's one of your parents' friends that works in an industry that you're interested in. And you're like, hey, you know, this is something that we talked about the other night, you should check it out. Just that quick little ping um, on LinkedIn is uh, can go a long way. Uh, it's also recommended, which we'll get into a little bit further, but uh, following up on birthdays, um, if you see somebody get a promotion, just give them a shout out, congrats. It's the little things like that that keep the relationships going. Um, but for now, we're just gonna focus on sharing this post. Um, so this is going to go to my LinkedIn profile. Anyone can see it. Um, a lot of times, you know, you can just write solid article on hashtag business models by, and then this is the, the key part, especially if you're dealing with Twitter, is um, tag the organization that wrote it. Uh, I found this very useful with Twitter if you see a company that's just been recently funded, uh, tech startups, um, a lot of times even with the articles, um, not so much on LinkedIn, but on Twitter, you can actually tag the authors too, um, and they will respond back. And it also gets you a lot of followers as well. Um, so just solid article on business models by Harvard Review. Let's see, I'm not really liking that one. Since this is a hot topic right now, let's do COVID impact on business models but harder as a view okay so we do that it also has suggestions down here at the bottom you can choose your own pictures um, since it is coming from harder business review i'll leave it alone um, another thing before you do this go read the article and make sure it's something that you want to be sharing um, i already scanned through this it is a decent article um, but because uh, like i mentioned my background was in 
um, just recently, uh, business analytics, this is something that we focused on and something that we're doing currently for economic development and it's very relevant. So then I will just hit post. Um, and then we will continue on to LinkedIn. So from here, here's my page. Um, some advice when it comes to LinkedIn. Uh, your, your background should be some kind of an action item based off the industry you're in. I'm asked to give a lot of uh, public speeches. Uh, so this was something I thought uh, fit very well. Um, take the time to get a professional headshot. Um, I don't know how many times I've gotten applications from people. I, we go check out your LinkedIn profile and it's, it's, it's not professionally done or it's um, inappropriate, you know, it's not business relevant. So um, get a professional headshot, they don't cost that much. And really with the phones nowadays, um, you can do some pretty decent work um, on your own. Now uh, down here, uh, put any kind of titles that you have, don't really expect you to right now. Um, if you are an MBA student though, put that on there. And then um, as a student, um, you can put down anything that has to do with your industry. And if you wanna know what those are, uh, I would uh, take a look at uh, indeed.com. So I'd already fired this up. Go to indeed.com, type in wherever it is that you're wanting to work, what industry, and go through some of the job descriptions. Um, so as you're funneling through these, you're gonna see a lot of the same buzzwords um, so right here, you know, Orland Parks Development Services Department seeks confident, skilled communicator. Um, so those in communication class, yeah, very important. Uh, professional, all the verbiage that you see, if you see a trend in all these, that's exactly what you want to include in the about you. You want to match that profile. A lot of times, especially with LinkedIn, um, there's other services out there like ZipRecruiter. They're going to funnel through resumes and they literally match up those keywords that are in the job descriptions with your resume. So beat them to the punch. Go on Indeed, find out what the common terms are that you know you want to be known for. Throw them in the about you section. And actually, um, here, I mean, I I am the chief executive officer, and this is where I work. But as a student, um, depending on you know what your background is or where you're trying to go, that's what you need to be. So that's very important. Now, whenever you come down a little bit further, um, activity, uh, these are some of the, the last things that I've done. Um, you can see I've got 2,100 followers. If you wanna follow me, uh, Google me, or not Google me, search me at LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to connect with you <clears throat> uh, via that way. Um, Experience-wise though, uh, put down every single job you've got right now. Um, that's, it's important just to build that because as students, um, you have the education, you're getting the education. Um, what you don't have is the experience and the experience matters. So anything that you can throw down here, I've been a consultant for a while for my own um, ad agency firm. Uh, it's just something I've always kept on here. And also a really cool thing that you can do is add your own um, documents. And this presentation is one that I did um, for one of Candace's class. It's a creative thinking one. Uh, it's just, it's a way to show off your work and you can do the same thing on Twitter, same thing here. Uh, for any of the organizations you work for um, or volunteer at, uh, throw that on here. I mean, just share as much work as possible. Um, same with your education, every last piece you've got, any kind of honor societies that you're in, uh, put that on here as well. And then there's also uh, license and certifications. So as we talked about, I'm a certified economic developer. I did not discuss uh, the fact that I went through Toastmasters and I can't stress this enough. Um, if you do not like public speaking, uh, you got to do Toastmasters. I mean, there's a Toastmasters club pretty much all over the nation. There are different levels. Um, whenever I started Toastmasters, I started in Decatur, and I didn't really think of it as a networking group. I just didn't like public speaking. I worked at the ad agency, had all these great ideas uh, when it came to different ad campaigns, designs. I just couldn't get the words out. And, you know, I, I joked around at the time um, with somebody who came in who was a, an elected official who asked us to do an ad campaign. He was like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be governor of Illinois, you know, and he said, well, you need to come in and uh, learn how to speak to the public. So I jumped on Toastmasters and at first it was terrible because I talk really fast anyway, uh, but I can only speak for like 45 seconds and sit down because I couldn't organize my thoughts. Um, and it's, it's very, very, I don't want to say cheap training that you can get, but the networking involved in there, most people that are Toastmasters are like heads of banks heads of organizations, the networking alone and the mentorship that I got in that group uh, was fantastic. Not only do you learn how to do public speaking, but you also learn how to lead meetings. That's the other side of it. It's, it's actually a board meeting where people take turns um, giving speeches. So it's, it's a fantastic organization. Um, 
very, very cheap uh, to get into. I highly recommend looking that up. Made a lot of great connections over the years. Um, but for you guys, license-wise, there's different designations that you guys can get um, online. It doesn't matter if it's through Microsoft, uh, different training that they've got going on. Amazon's got some really cool cloud service certificates um, that you can get. And then there's also like project management, becoming a designated project management professional, PMP, I believe it's called. Look that up. Those are some courses that you can take actually with a Linda subscription that you can probably do via the library. So if you've got downtime this summer, check those out, get those designations, throw them on there. Because there's certain things, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in, Toastmasters, communication matters, project management matters. And now with everything shifting to the cloud, I highly recommend checking out Amazon and getting a couple of those and throwing on there as well. And then this section right down here, this is the bread and butter of finding solid career opportunities. If you volunteer, um, you're going to be involved in uh, not only giving back to the community, which is fantastic, I, I love coaching football, uh, but you meet a lot of people this way. And when you're on a board, it um, doesn't matter if it's for workforce, which I did, um, different kinds of ad agency ones, uh, marketing teams, because that was my background at the time. These opened up a lot of opportunities because I came in and I knew a little bit about web design. That's what I was studying at the time. I volunteered on some boards for it. And on those boards, you know, being the webmaster forum were heads of different agencies and they know people, they go to church with people. And from there, it just built my brand as being a go-to guy and a problem solver, uh, which opened up more doors for me. And this, this really works. So even as a student, volunteer as much as possible and make those connections. And speaking of connections, that's who you want to reach out to and LinkedIn. It's, it's the whole point. It's not just having your resume out there, but it's building relationships with people. So if there's, um, find your parents, find your parents' friends, um, anyone that's in your family, um, your classmates, uh, that's, that's key right now too. Build those relationships with your classmates and uh, lean on them pretty heavy, especially in this next section. If you have friends in school or parents' friends, get them to endorse you. I mean, it, it takes, it's really quick just to click on and say, yes, uh, you know, I am known for marketing. You know, there's 99 plus people that have endorsed me for that and leadership and social media. This is pretty much how it started. And um, this gets you boosted up in the search engines as well. Um, if you can get them to write it out, recommendations are even better. So if you're working with somebody um, or a classmate at all, just ask them for a recommendation. It, it doesn't take very much time at all uh, to get some people to write something and do the favor uh, for somebody else. It's just a matter of emailing or reaching out via LinkedIn to get this section filled out. But it is a uh, key to uh, have those uh, recommendations on there. And then as far as uh, any accomplishments that you have, uh, throw all of those on there as well, um, different languages, and then the interest as far as uh, who you're following, uh, just to keep track of what else is going on on LinkedIn. So from that, let's take a refresh and see if that thing posted for me. I think that would be down here under activity. Yes, so that's, we just went through the whole process you know, I shared this, I will end up going on notifications later on. Um, there's a lot of notifications that I have right now, just because of everything that's going on with uh, COVID in Bloomington Normal. So we're sharing a lot of different um, work that's happening with that. I've uh, created a couple documents, recovery guides that we're sharing. And then also anytime that we're in the press, um, that gets shared as well. Uh, so again, this is all about building your brand um, can't stress enough to stay on topic to what for what you want to be known for and uh, build your um, page accordingly. And then whenever you're on um, the area over here with Feedly, make sure you're tracking uh, different articles that um, you want to be known for. Uh, so we haven't gotten to the point where we're actually generating our own content, but we are to the point where we are sharing other people's content for what we want to be known about. And if people uh, come back and talk about it, on your page, um, similar to Facebook or anywhere else, uh, make sure that you follow up as well. And as you're going through it, uh, go ahead and tag people that you think would be interested in the conversation, um, in your notifications uh, and keep the conversation going. But don't be afraid to ask for advice from anyone that is uh, more seasoned. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, even if it's just for a school project you're doing right now, you could call the head of a newspaper head of a bank, head of any industry that you're interested in, say, hey, I'm doing a project for school. Um, can I interview you? And you'd be surprised at where that would go. 
I mean, there's been multiple times I've done that. I've had plenty of mentors. I've mentored plenty of other people as well. Um, so uh, this is some best practices for LinkedIn. Again, take care of the photo. Picture's worth a thousand words. Um, make sure that this is filled out appropriately and uh, make sure your activity, you know, actually, you know, matches what you wanna be known for. For me, it's all about well, all the economic developers I know I've ever met. If I go to a conference, I immediately grab their card. Any meeting I have, I follow up as soon as I get back to the office and I hit them up on LinkedIn. So this is just a collection of uh, people that I've ran into and there's plenty of Millican students on there. So if you wanna connect, um, follow up. And uh, next we will take a deeper dive into uh, the world of Twitter, which is where you can uh, really get some notoriety um, and build some followers that way. But for right now, this is uh, what we'll stop doing for LinkedIn. If you guys have any uh, questions, comments, um, shoot them to Candace. I'll make sure that the comments are turned on below if you want to add them um, down there and I will try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but that's it for now. Uh, looking forward to the next one.